Okay, everybody, this is going to be the cockpit tour of the Technum P2006T. My name is Mark Cole. I'm a flight instructor at Sling Pilot Academy, so I'm going to be running you through what we're looking at today. At Sling Pilot Academy, if you enroll in the full-time pilot training program that we have, uh, you get 30 hours of multi-engine time in this aircraft. That will take you through your multi-engine land rating, and then you, you should still have enough time to build your 15 hours required PIC to where you can then become a multi-engine instructor and MEI. Um, the first thing I would like to show you is actually right at my feet. This is our emergency gear extension switch. So this aircraft obviously has retractable landing gear. Uh, it's a complex aircraft, so it has a variable pitch prop or constant speed prop, retractable gear and flaps. So if there ever was an issue with the uh, gear extension or retraction, this aircraft has a nitrogen system that will actually blow the gear down and it's actuated by these two knobs and it's in this nice convenient place. So I'll go ahead and shut that there. And then we'll back up and starting with the rest of the cockpit, I'm just gonna throw the master switch on. And when we do that, we confirm that the gear switch is down and that we have three um, green lights indicating there's no problems with the uh, landing gear. So coming over here on the bottom left, uh, and here we have a bunch of different circuit breakers. There's other circuit breakers on the other side. So we'll bring it up here. Um, this is a system that will just let you know if there's an engine fire. So if I press that, you can see the enunciations. That's just testing to make sure that the system is able to pr uh, show if there's fires or systems like that. This switch right here connects the autopilot to the trim. So the autopilot will trim the aircraft before it tries to actual, actually move the flight controls in order to hold an altitude. Uh, these two switches here, this is your pitot heat and your master switch for the autopilot. The autopilot is right here. And it's a basic autopilot. Obviously it'll hold a heading, it'll follow your CDI. It, it'll fly an approach for you. Um, it'll hold an altitude or a vertical speed. Uh, pretty basic autopilot, pretty standard. Um, they all work about the same in my experience and this one is no different. Uh, then we'll come back over here. So this right here is the indicator of your trim, your pitch trim, so nose down, nose up. And that is controlled by this electronic or electric set, um, actuator on the yoke, as well as the wheel down here. Whereas if you have a, some type of a failure, you can also run it manually down here. And then we'll come back over here. So this is your ELT. Um, that's gonna go off if there's a, if you have a really rough landing or you crash the airplane, it basically transmits on a specific frequency. It'll, it'll transmit on 121.5 uh, and hopefully let people know to come get you. These are how to adjust the cockpit lighting. So at nighttime, these switches will adjust the cockpit lighting. You have cabin heat and cabin heat. Uh, the air is heated by engine. Air is passed around the exhaust manifold then ducted back into the cockpit. So these control that. You have your Hobbs meter here. Um, we have rudder trim here, as you can see, we're basically right on center. And then the rudder trim itself is controlled by a little switch down here. Um, this is your emergency slash starting battery. So this is a separate battery than the main battery, as you can see. If we wanted to, we could start up the aircraft. And then also if we had an issue with the main battery, this little switch right here actually connects the emergency battery to the most important systems of the aircraft. What else do we have? Okay, this one's really important. This is our gear switch in the Technum. Um, obviously it's down with three greens right now because we're sitting on the ground. Uh, yeah, that's gonna raise and lower the gear. These, This button tests the lights. So if you think that one of these is out, you can press that and compare how it looks when you're pressing the button or not pressing the button to, in, to ensure that you either are having an issue or you just have an issue with the light bulb. Uh, you've got your clock, which is your timer and everything else. Um, and then we'll kind of take it up here to the G, uh, G950, which is our PFD and MFD. Um, this is basically a really similar system to the G1000. So we have the G1000 in our full motion Redbird simulator inside. And then we also have basically the G1000 in the Technum. So by the time you get into your uh, twin training or your multi-engine training at Sling Pilot Academy, you're going to be really used to this system because you would have already done a fair amount of time in the simulator doing your IFR training. So you know, might as well just hit that so we can see our map here. This is a cool aircraft because it's IFR certified so we can fly through the clouds and actually start to begin building that actual instrument time. 
And speaking of actual instrument time and certifications, that's what all these uh, analog instruments are for along the bottom here. Um, obviously, if we had an electrical issue and we, for whatever reason, lost our PFD or MFD and we were in IMC, we need to be able to control the aircraft. So we have an attitude indicator here, an airspeed indicator, and an altimeter here. Uh, notice that when we change the altimeter setting in the Colesman window, we see uh, millibars instead of inches of mercury, which is what we're used to. This is an Italian made aircraft, so they do certain things differently. Um, the G950 still shows you your inches of mercury. So if we were to set this thing to field elevation right now, which is just over 100 feet at Zamperini Field, Tango Oscar Alpha, we're at 3003. So I normally just set the same altimeter, which is just about 100 feet. Um, moving over to the right, these are our fuel pressure gauges for both engines. So the engines in this aircraft are the 912 uh, ULS S3 engine. So that means that the engines are carbureted. And so we have an engine driven fuel pump on each side as well as an electric backup pump. As you can see, if I turn the pumps on, the gauges will indicate some fuel pressure there. And I might as well take that time to come up and then kind of show the engine setup and the fuel tanks. So these are our fuel selectors. If you can see that, as you can see, the left engine will be running on the left tank. We have the ability to cross feed. So at this setting, the left engine would be running off the right fuel tank and the same options exist on this side. Uh, these are our fuel pumps here. These are our ignitions. So we have one magneto or CDI ignition and two. So these are for the left side engine. These are for the right side engine. There's obviously two of them for redundancy, just like you would see in a typical aircraft with a dual set of magnetos to keep the engine running. And then you have your starter. So once you have everything ready to go, you hit this red button and that will provide the start to the engine. So if we come kind of down here, we have our magnetic compass and we keep coming on down to kind of the center console here. Here we have our master switch, which provides uh, electrical power to all of our systems. Uh, the two switches here, basically, there's actually an independent alternator as well on each engine. So these switches open up the uh, open the circuit that connects the alternator to the battery. So we have a right side alternator, a left side alternator. They call them generators in the POH for this aircraft, but that's basically what they are. We have avionics switch, left side, right side, and these are all different buses. The cross buses, they're actually, they kind of link all the different avionics buses, generator buses, backup buses. So that's what these switches do. And then moving on down to the throttle, the propeller control, this is what you might expect in a traditional multi-engine aircraft with left and right throttle, uh, left and right prop control, and then carburetor heat for the left and the right side. You might notice that we're missing a uh, mixture control, and that's because both of the engines in, in this aircraft are Rotax engines, and we have the carbureted version, as I mentioned before, there's a diaphragm and a needle that actually, based on atmospheric pressure, changes the mixture automatically. Down here, we have defrost, and then we also have chokes. So if it's cold in the morning and the engine doesn't want to start, we can use the choke, which will temporarily richen the mixture and allow less oxygen into the combustion chamber to get the engine started. And then we bring back the choke and the engine's running. So that's how that works. Let's see, we're coming over here. This is our flaps. So right now we're at full flaps and we can set the flaps up to takeoff or really anywhere in between based on whatever atmospheric conditions might be present. So those are the flaps. And then continuing to move over underneath the yoke on the instructor side or the co-pilot side or whatever you want to call it. Um, these are all the lights. So we have a landing light, a taxi light, nav light, strobe lights, and an instrument light, which will just illuminate the instruments at nighttime. Um, let's see, moving up here, we have our engine instrumentation, right? So we have propeller RPM, we have manifold pressure for both engines, cylinder head temperature, oil temperature, and oil pressure. So obviously one gauge for each engine, they're all lined up. That's how we make sure the engines are running nominally when they are running. And then down here is our electrical system, right? So we have two alternators. Right now the switch is showing the left side and then we can pop it over to the right side. The engines are not running, so we're not creating any power. Uh, we can also press this showing that the battery does have electrical energy, right? Push for volts. Amps would be what's created by the, uh, how they measure what the output of the alternator is. Keeping on moving, we got more circuit breakers over here. We've got a tachometer for the right engine. And that may complete the cabin or the cockpit tour for the Tecna P2006T. If you have any questions, 
drop them in the comments below. Other than that, we look forward to seeing you at Sling Pilot Academy and uh, come get your multi-engine rating with us. It'll be a fun time.